This is how I accidentally manifested Jennifer Garner. <laughs> and Joe thinks I am out of my brain, but I know that this is how I manifested her. Get ready with me while I share with you how I accidentally manifested Jennifer Garner. Manifesting has been a big part of my life. It's actually how I moved out to California. After reading You'll See It When You Believe It by Wayne Dyer, I was propelled to move out to California. Two days ago, like what can I record that would be interesting for my audience? You always love celebrity story. When I moved out to California, I never watched Alias or anything like that. Honestly, it was my own insecurity. I thought Jennifer Garner was just a pretty face and that's it. I thought, I was like, why do I wanna watch this? She probably has horrible acting skills. What's the point? Fast forward 10 years later, I work on a movie called Valentine's Day. And who's in the movie but Jennifer Garner? What am I doing in the movie? I'm actually standing in for Julia Roberts' son in the movie. His name's Bryce. Shout out to Bryce. And I stood in for him the whole movie. So I was on set a lot. First off, let me just say Gary Marshall, uh, God rest his soul. He was one of the most amazing people to work with. I could not believe how amazing Jennifer Garner was. Why was she that amazing? The very first day that Jennifer Garner was on set, she came up to me and introduced herself to me. As a stand-in, I wasn't in the scene with her. Sometimes stand-ins do back and forth for eye lines with actors. But in this specific scenario, I didn't have that case with Jennifer. And she came up to me, introduced herself, and was just so genuine and sweet and amazing. That's not it. Day two, day three, day four, she not only remembered my name and would call me out in the beginning of the day, but she remembers everyone's name on set. It was like a skill that I wish I could embody on a regular basis. She knew Crafty's name. She knew every, a PA. She knew if you were on set, she knew your name. And maybe it's, you know, this is part of her acting. You know, maybe she just remembers people's names because like, that's kind of like what she does as an actress. No, no. I've met many actresses. They don't remember your name. I've met many actors, many actresses. And they don't remember your name. They just don't. So she remember people's names? That doesn't make her like the sweetest person in the entire world. Not at all. But about a week into the project of Valentine's Day, she called me aside and we went into this classroom. At the time we were filming in a school. We went into this classroom and she was like, Tara, I want you to meet my daughter. And at the time I met her daughter, Violet. Um, Violet was like my height at the time. And it was not my doing, it was Jennifer's doing. And I thought that was just so incredibly genuine and so incredibly awesome. Truth be told, I was at a really low place in my life and I really didn't know what the next step was at that point. So I felt like this woman kind of inspired me just to kind of keep going and that there's good people in this world and that it's all gonna work out. And it did. That was my amazing experience with Jennifer. I have had many good and bad experiences with actors, but Jennifer stood out to me and always will. And after that, I watched most all of her movies. I watched most all of her television shows. If I saw her coming out with a new movie, which she is next week if, with Netflix, I was like, I'm watching this. Life happens and I ended up not recording it, right? That night, I was putting Grayson to sleep and I could not find his remote control. And usually I lay in bed with him and he was already drifting off. And when I look up at the TV, it is a movie that I've never seen of Jennifer Garner's. I was like, this means I need to record it tomorrow. This is like a reminder that I need to record this segment tomorrow. So I, I sat there and watched it because I had never seen Catch and Release. I had never seen it before. And again, she did an amazing job. I feel like some parts were unique. I like the movie. It's a cute little romance. The fact that I had never seen it, I was like totally here for it. And I thought that was like a reminder for me from the universe. Next day rolls around. I have tickets to go see Adam Grant, who is talking about his new book called Hidden Potential. Hidden Potential is basically what we're talking about. Manifesting as well as working towards your goals, as well as like, you know, 
different psychological sides of life that can really make you think like, okay, my teachers in school really do matter. And what I say to my children really does matter. And, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. Hashtag Jennifer Garner, you know, that kind of thing. Normally this kind of thing is not Joe's cup of tea, but I convinced him because he was being interviewed at LA Talks by Rain Wilson. So excited because not only was Joe gonna be there with me, but it was just gonna be such a special occasion because this is kind of like my energy in life and it's mixing Joe's energy in life. Joe's a big Office fan. Not so much, sorry. I know y'all probably hate me for that one. But Joe, that's like his vibe. We go and doors open at seven and a gentleman pulls us out of line, who I guess is the head of LA Talks. And he said, um, I'd like to see y'all get decent seats. Can I help you walk in? And he said that not because he knew me from the show, but he said that because we were little people and he could see we were slow. <laughs> and I respect that. I'll take it. Because general admission, everybody is like, like hyenas rushing for the stage. And as much as I wanna see Adam Grant in all of his glory, I'm not gonna be like a little chihuahua trying to get in and squeeze my way through. He took us in, I was just so incredibly grateful. And I thought like, wow, this is just so awesome. You know, there's not, it, it was just such a great feeling. He put us in the front row, okay? Nobody is currently in the theater. And then 10 seconds goes by, I'm looking at Joe and these two women come out on stage and you can see that they're just kind of like checking out the place. She looks at me and I look at her and she's like, she said, hey, how are y'all doing? And I said, good, how are you? And then she said, I'm great, I'm Jen. And I was like, yes, we met actually. I met you on the set of Valentine's Day. It was a really long time ago. I was standing in for Bryce. She was like, I remember. And then I said, yeah, you introduced me to Violet and it really impacted me. I remember she was like my height at the time. And she was like, it's so good to see you again. And that was about it. That, that was our conversation. She was like, have a good night. And right? And so I didn't want to like take up, take up all of her time. I could tell she was like backstage. At the time, all I could think of was like, she is a fan. And that was like, you know, fans sometimes hang out backstage when they have like VIP. And of course, Jennifer Garner would have VIP. This is insane. And I told Joe and Joe was like, oh, it's like that Jen. And I was like, yeah, it's like that Jen. And Joe knows that I've always had this um, admiration for Jennifer Garner because of how incredibly warm and unique she is. And then, <laughs> lo and behold, here comes Adam Grant and he is saying, hey, you know, everybody's like so super excited to see him. And he's like, unfortunately, Rain is sick. And everybody was like, <sighs> and I turned to Joe and I was like, that's why Jennifer's here. And who comes to interview but Jennifer Garner. So I got a front row seat to not only meeting Jennifer, but then again, <laughs> but then just having that moment, having that like two hour experience, two and a half hour experience where she wasn't supposed to be there that day. She got the call that morning that morning the same morning that i'm thinking about how i need to be doing this video the same morning and look i would never wish illness upon anyone i did not try to manifest this but this to me is not a coincidence i do not believe in coincidences this is how i accidentally manifested jennifer garner <laughs> and joe thinks i am out of my brain but i know that this is how i manifested her and if I can just say, if you aren't a fan, if you think she's just a pretty face, you are so wrong. She is everything and more in the sense that she is just as genuine on camera, on screen as she is in real life. And if you were there watching this interview with Hidden Potential, if you were at LA Talks, you saw the real Jennifer. How Jennifer was on stage is how she is off stage. It truly makes me want to be a better person because 
it's it's not easy i don't care what anyone says it is not easy remembering everybody's name on set have you ever seen credits there's like so many people that work on set so many top of her game in my opinion and one of my favorite actresses coincidentally she has a movie coming out and no this isn't a promo for it but i am excited to see it as even if it's like meant for children i'm excited to see it because it has a lot of amazing people in it and i love jennifer garner don't dismiss your thoughts because your thoughts become into reality and i believe that head shoulders knees and toes 100 percent and i'm grateful that i accidentally manifested jennifer garner <laughs> I have Maggie in the car. I'm about to take off. I am curious. Have you ever accidentally manifested? What did you accidentally manifest? I want to know. Just know whatever you're thinking about right now is manifesting into your everyday life. If you're looking for a really great read, Hidden Potential, A plus. No, I'm not sponsored. A plus read. That's my story. That's how I accidentally manifested Jennifer Garner.